Let's keep working on our pawn game in Greenfoot. So last time we added score to our game, and you've probably played your game a little bit, and you've probably noticed that your game's kind of boring. You can't win. The computer's just too good. It always knows where the ball's going to be, and it always gets there just in time. So there's a couple ways we can fix this, and one way we could do that is we can make the game a little bit harder by making the ball speed up when it hits the paddles. So to do this, what we're going to do in this screencast is we're going to make the ball speed up every time it hits the paddles. And it's going to speed up by a percentage like 10% or 20% or 30%. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to go into the ball code. So the ball code, basically, if you kind of look at how the ball works, if you remember, we have an X speed and a Y speed. And that uh, those Y speeds and X speeds get applied to the ball by using set location here. So not that you need to do this, but if we want the speeds to like increase by 10%, that would mean we need to start using decimals in our code. So let's say that we want to increase the X speed by 10%. That would mean that we would need to use something like 3.3 sometimes in our code. If I press compile, Greenfoot says, whoa, can't do that you're going to lose, you're going to lose um, some precision when we convert a double to an integer. Because look, we are still using integers here. And integers mean whole numbers. So Greenfoot's going to round down and just use three. So we can try and fix that by changing this integer into a double, which is a uh, decimal. So right here, if I just click here and I use double, and I press compile, Greenfoot says, well, okay, that's okay up there. But down here, set location can't be can't use doubles it has to use integers so what we need to do is we need to find a way to move the ball using doubles or decimals luckily greenfoot includes a little way for us to do that we can go to edit and import a class and these are some classes that greenfoot comes with uh, one of them is called smooth mover and you said and you can see it says a variation of an actor that uses doubles for the coordinates instead of integers that's like exactly what we want to use. So we can click import. And now this smooth mover class has some code in here that lets us use doubles instead of integers to keep track of things. We need the ball to be able to use that. So we go back to the ball class and we say that the ball class extends smooth mover. So we type in smooth mover here and then we press compile. And if you click back out to your uh, Greenfoot screen here, you can see that now ball is a subclass of smooth mover, which means a ball can do anything a smooth mover can do, like use doubles for the location. So we'll go back to the ball class here and we will change this integer for the Y speed to a double. Now that's great, I'm gonna change this back to a three because I wanna start with threes. We can use decimals for our um, ball movement code. But now we need to make the ball move faster when it hits the paddle. So I'm going to come down to my uh, bounce off paddles method. And right here it says when it hits a paddle, multiply the Y speed by a negative 1. So if I want the ball to go 10% faster using math, uh, I would need that 3 to become like a 3.3. .3. So to do that in math, I would multiply the Y speed by a negative 1.1. .1. So that makes the ball move 10% faster when it hits the paddles. Or it could go negative 1.5, which would mean it moves 50% faster. Or, you know, you could do all the way to 99, so now it would move 99% faster when it hits the paddles. But I'm going to change it back to negative 1.1. And now, when I press compile, like this, and I come out and I play my game, we can check to see if it's working. I play in my game, coming over here to hit the ball, and I can pause the game and inspect the ball right here, and I can see that the Y speed is now a negative 3.3. And I could check it again by keep playing and having the computer paddle hit the ball again, and I can pause it, and I can check and see what the speed is. And now it's negative, or not negative, but it's 3.6. So it is getting faster by 10% almost every time. 
Now this is pretty cool, the ball gets faster, but it also causes another problem. If I play my game for a while, the ball is going to be moving pretty fast. And let's just say the ball, you know, continues to speed up, and then I accidentally miss it. So watch what happens here. When I miss it, okay, just remember which way the ball is going to move. The ball is moving this way, and it's moving pretty fast. So now if I accidentally miss it, and I press, you know, now look. I missed it and the ball keeps going that direction and it's definitely not going the starting speed. So we need to come up with a way to reset the speed and maybe even randomize the angle when the ball goes back to the middle. So here's a little kind of picture to help us out. And the ball goes back to the middle, maybe we want it to pick between four different angles or maybe you want six or eight, it's totally up to you. But we need to kind of know what's happening or how we control the ball when this happens. So before we start here, you've got to remember that up here in this top left corner is 0, 0. And along the x-axis, moving this way, x is a positive number. And along the y-axis, moving down, y is a positive number. So it's exactly, the y is exactly opposite of kind of math class. So keeping that in mind, if we go down here to this speed, the x speed moving this way to the right is 3, a positive 3. And the y speed moving down is a positive 3. And then this speed going up to the right here, it's still a positive 3 for the x speed. But for the y speed, it's moving up, so that's a negative 3. Now, I'm not going to go through and label all the x speeds and y speeds over here. I'll let you do that on your own. But one thing that's important to note here is that you could kind of group these speeds together here like this and if you think about it you know these could be choices you know choice one choice two choice three and choice four and what we would kind of need to have the computer do is pick you know randomly one two three or four and then set the x speeds to these combinations of numbers so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a method that lets the computer do this. So if I go back to Greenfoot here, what I want to do is go to the ball code, and I want to start writing a new method. So I'm just going to come down here at the bottom and write a new method. Maybe I'll squeeze it in here. And I'll write uh, public void um, pick angle. Let's call it that. Now. What I want to do here is have the computer pick a random number and then assign the ball some speeds for that. So for a random number, I need to start with an integer. So I'll come up top and I'll just go public integer random. I'll just call it that. And that can equal, no, we'll make it equal zero to start. So now I can come back down to my method. And the first thing I need to do is make the computer pick a random number. So I'm going to say that random equals greenfoot.getRandom number. And then in parentheses, I need to pick the highest number Greenfoot's going to pick, like between zero and something, but it can't pick that number. So I'm going to actually pick four here because Greenfoot can pick either zero, one, two, or three, and that's actually four choices. Then I can just use if statements to kind of take care of it. So I can say if random... Um, equals zero, then I can say that the x speed and the y speed need to be th positive three. So I can say x speed equals three and y speed equals three. Now I'm not going to do all four choices right now because I don't want to take up too much of your time. So right here I'm going to just write a note that says, you know, put in the other numbers, you know, uh, one through two. And I'm just going to write else here. I'm going to say, you know, if it doesn't pick zero for right now, I'm going to make it pick x speed equals three and the y speed equals negative three. So now I have this sweet little method here, and I would make this longer. Again, I'm going to make you, let you do the other two speeds. But I have this sweet method that I need it to happen every time the ball goes off the screen. So I'm going to take pick angle and I'm going to copy it. And up here where I have it um, scoring points, after we score some points, I'm going to say, you know what, we need to pick an angle. 
and we're going to do pick an angle here also because we need it to happen on both sides of the screen. So now if I compile it and I go back here and I play my game a little bit, the ball will speed up. And so you have to bear with me playing here for a second to make the ball speed up a little bit so we can tell. But you can tell the ball's kind of speeding up here a lot because the angle it's going at is kind of getting longer. And if I move out of the way and accidentally miss it, it should go back to the middle and kind of pick three for one of its speeds. And so every time I miss it, it should kind of come down here and it should pick either three or negative three. And there it goes, it picks the other speed. So that's one way we can make the computer a little bit more honest by making the ball faster. There is another way that you can make the computer play a little bit more like a human. And I'll leave this kind of up to you. But there's two different ways you could do. One way is you could make it so that the computer can only play when the ball is on this half of the screen. So it has to do with the, the ball's Y coordinate. So if the ball's Y coordinate was less than half of the screen, then the computer paddle could move. That's one way you could take care of it. The other way you could make this a little bit more fair is only allow the computer to move when the ball is moving towards it. And that's something that you can work on with um, using the Y speed. So um, you're going to have to do a little bit of editing of the code in the ball class to take care of that. But that's how you can make the game a little bit more difficult, make the ball speed up, and make the computer lose once in a while.